If I had a dollar for every beginner hacker who thinks the reason they're not finding bugs is because they don't have the right burp suite extension, I'd be rich enough to buy my own zero day and call it a day. No, seriously. I've seen people write 500 line bash scripts to automate recon and then completely forget to even look at the web app. It's wild. Everyone's out here treating hacking like a magic ritual. As if installing Subfinder, Amass, and HTTPX in a specific moon phase is going to suddenly birth an RCE out of thin air. And when it doesn't work, they blame the tools, or the target, or the weather. Here's the thing no one tells you, the reason you're not finding bugs. It's not because you're not smart enough. It's because your workflow is trash. And I say that with love, because mine used to be too. Nothing made sense. Nothing led anywhere. I was generating data, not intel. And the worst part? I thought I was making progress. I had folders, I had scans, I had screenshots, I had notes. But what I didn't have was a single bug. I started to believe I just wasn't cut out for this. Maybe I needed to study more, watch more YouTube tutorials, learn another burp plugin. Maybe there was a tool I hadn't installed yet. That's the trap. That's the lie. Let me break something to you. Hacking is not a tool problem. It's a thinking problem. You can't automate intuition, you can't word list your way to creativity, and you definitely can't find bugs by clicking around aimlessly hoping Burp Suite burps out a bounty. The problem isn't your toolkit, it's your mental model. Most beginner hackers are operating on vibes. They're scanning domains without knowing what to do with the results. They're fuzzing random parameters hoping one of them spills secrets. It's like walking into a library, flipping to a random page, and hoping it tells you where the treasure is buried. One day, after yet another week of dry targets and zero findings, I stumbled into a private Discord server. I won't say who was in there, but let's just say they didn't think like the rest of Twitter. These people weren't talking about tools, they were talking about tactics, workflows, attack surface logic. One guy said something that broke my brain. I don't scan for subdomains, I scan for value. I sat there like, what the hell does that mean? But the more I watched, the more it made sense. These people weren't guessing, they were mapping, strategizing, their recon wasn't passive, it was investigative. They'd start from a target's business model, not its DNS records. They'd ask, what data do they care about? And where would that data logically flow through this app? That's when I realized I was playing a different game, and I was losing. I went back to my recon process and nuked it. Gone were the endless bash one-liners. Instead, I built a workflow. Yes, a literal visual map of how I approach targets. Enumeration came after asking the right questions. Passive recon became guided recon. Every tool had a job, and every result had a next step. I wasn't just collecting data, I was building a case. And suddenly bugs started to appear. Like they were always there, I just wasn't tuned in. There was this one target. Looked boring on the surface. Everyone said it was picked clean, but I noticed a pattern in their subdomain naming. Something subtle. Led me to a dev instance with an exposed swagger spec. That spec pointed to an endpoint no one had ever mentioned. It had broken auth checks buried under feature flags, chained it with a misconfigured redirect, and boom, full account takeover. Not because I ran some secret scanner, but because I thought differently. It's not about how many tools you run. It's about how well you understand the system you're breaking into. And let's be honest, most of you are so focused on building bigger recon stacks that you never stop to ask if you're even pointing them in the right direction. So let me say something that might sting a little. If you're still watching recon tutorials every week, you're probably stuck. If your workflow is just a slightly modified version of some GitHub repo with cool ASCII art, you're probably stuck. If you've been hacking for a year and still don't know how to explain why a bug actually worked, you're not learning, you're consuming. You need to stop hacking like a consumer and start hacking like an investigator, like someone who asks questions and follows leads, not someone who runs a tool and hopes. The best hackers I know, they don't watch tutorials anymore. They don't need to because their learning isn't passive, it's practical. They break things, reflect, and refine. Now I'm not saying I'm some elite hacker sitting on a throne of zero days, but I am saying that once I stopped following the herd and started thinking in systems, my results changed, my workflow changed, and more importantly, my confidence changed. Because once you understand how to truly approach a target, it doesn't matter if Burp Suite crashes. You've already mapped out the next three steps. I see it all the time at these hacker conferences. People crowding booths collecting stickers, thinking proximity to the scene somehow translates to skill, then they go home, plaster their laptops with the logos, and still can't find a CSRF in a basic web form. Now community matters, but there's a dangerous illusion that just being in the hacker ecosystem makes you better. It doesn't. The uncomfortable truth is this. Most of you aren't finding bugs because you're hunting where everyone else is hunting, using the same tools everyone else is using. Thinking the way everyone else is thinking, you're all fighting over the same small pool of obvious vulnerabilities. Meanwhile, the real hunters are playing a different game entirely. 
They're looking where no one else is looking. They're thinking about the application's purpose, not just its perimeter. And here's another bitter pill. Automation isn't going to save you. Yeah, I know. Everyone's hyped about AI for bug bounty. Just let GPT analyze your attack surface, please. The tools are getting better, but they're trained on known patterns. The juiciest bugs, the ones that pay life-changing money, aren't following known patterns. They're novel. They're contextual. They require human creativity and insight. No script is going to find that weird interaction between a caching layer and an authentication system that leads to account takeover. That takes a human who understands both systems deeply. I've noticed something about the most successful hackers I know. They don't specialize in vulnerabilities. They specialize in context. One friend only hacks healthcare APIs. Another focuses exclusively on cryptocurrency exchanges. They've gone so deep into these domains that they understand the business constraints, the regulatory requirements, the typical architecture patterns, everything that shapes how these applications are built. When a new target comes up in their chosen domain, they're not starting from scratch. They already have mental models ready to go. They know where the high value assets are and where corners get cut. The hardest lesson I had to learn was that patience isn't just a virtue in hacking. It's a competitive advantage. Everyone wants instant results. They run their automated scans and if nothing pops, they move on. But the hunters who make consistent money, they're willing to spend weeks on a single target. They're methodical. They keep detailed notes. They revisit old assumptions. They treat hacking like a research project, not a lottery ticket. That's why I ended up writing that hacker book guide last year. The one about making your first thousand dollars from hacking. It took me months to distill everything I'd learned into a framework that actually made sense. Not another run these 10 tools checklist, but a proper mental model for approaching targets. How to think about attack surfaces, how to map business logic to technical implementations, how to spot patterns that signal potential weak points. The serious hunters got it immediately. It's the difference between buying a fish and learning how to catch your own, and honestly, seeing people apply those frameworks and start landing their first bounties, that's been more satisfying than any bug I've caught myself. Look, I get the appeal of the shortcut, the magic bullet, the ultimate recon methodology that will finally unlock all those bounties. But it doesn't exist. What exists is the hard, unglamorous work of truly understanding a system, its code, its context, its creators. The sooner you embrace that reality, the sooner you'll start finding bugs that actually matter. So instead of asking, what tools should I add to my arsenal? Start asking, what mental models am I missing? Instead of, how can I scan faster? Ask, how can I think deeper? Because at the end of the day, it's not your toolbox that needs an upgrade. It's your approach. The hunters who consistently pull in five and six figure bounties aren't the ones with the most GitHub stars or the most elaborate bash aliases. They're the ones who've learned to see digital systems the way a master thief sees a building. Not as a collection of doors and windows, but as a living ecosystem of constraints, assumptions, and human decisions. Each one a potential vector. If only you have the patience and perspective to recognize it. So go ahead, add another burp extension to your collection if it makes you feel better. But just know that the real power isn't in the plugin, it's in the person using it. And until you upgrade that component, you're just running in place.